Syndicated feeds like RSS, Atom, or XML are some of the most widespread communication methods employed on the internet today. If you check your favorite sites often for updates, having their feeds and a good RSS reader might be the time saver you've been looking for. So what does it mean exactly to subscribe to a feed? Most websites, when they update themselves with new articles or news updates, publish those same items to a feed. If you are subscribed to that feed from your reader, you will receive those same items to your reader so that you can read them there, rather than going to those websites yourself. If you monitor multiple websites, this can be a huge time saver because you no longer have to visit each of those sites to find out if they've made updates and to read their articles. It also gives you a way to keep tabs on all those sites because if you haven't received anything in your reader, chances are they haven't updated their site since the last time that you saw it. It's imperative that you have a good solid reader and a good understanding of how to use it so that you can take advantage of these feeds. I use Google Reader because it's available online for free and I can access it from any computer and it ties right into my Google account. We'll be looking at that today as we explore the different ways that you can receive and manage and browse your different feeds from your favorite websites. But now let's get started. Assuming you already have your Google account, you can access Google Reader just by clicking the More button on Google.com and clicking Reader. From then on, you can easily access it just by adding it as a bookmark. The two most important things you're going to need to know for using your new reader is how to add feeds and how to remove them. The first step in adding a feed is to visit the site that you'd like to get updates from. Once you're on the site, you need to look for an RSS feed or an XML feed or something of that nature. Usually it's displayed as an orange icon. Here are the RSS feeds from lifehacker.com. They have a full content, partial content, and comments feeds. I'm assuming the partial content allows me to see just a teaser of the article, but it features no ads, but it's designed to get me to come to the site. The full content, however, allows me to view the entire article inside my reader. So that's the one I'm going to go for. By clicking the feed icon, depending on your browser, in this case Firefox, will bring up a preview of the feed so I can see what the feed will look like. Then I simply click the reader that I'd like to use, in my case Google, and I can instruct Firefox to always use Google to subscribe to these feeds by checking this box. Then click subscribe now, select add to Google Reader, and we're done. Now Lifehacker has been added to my Google Reader. Removing feeds is even easier. All you do is click the manage subscriptions button and then click the trash can that corresponds to the feed that you want to remove. Press OK, and now the feed has been removed from your collection. And that's the basics for adding and removing feeds from Google Reader. Perhaps one of the most important virtues of any feed reader is how quickly and efficiently it allows you to go through your feeds each day. Every feed on your list, as you begin to accumulate them, starts to collect feeds anytime those websites are updated. Now you could just go to any one of these feeds from a specific website and read just what is going on inside that website. But that could take you a lot of time and it can be a little disorienting to go through several feeds, especially when you've got 20 or more feeds. The most efficient way to do this is to use Google Reader's All Items screen. 
that allows you to view all your feeds in one area. It's important to make sure that you're only viewing the new items so that you don't end up sifting through old items that you've already read. Simply click this link and now you are only viewing the items from all the websites that you're subscribed to that you have not read yet. Generally I go through my content in two passes. The first pass is a filtering phase that I do pretty much every day, sometimes twice a day, to sift down the articles that I would like to read. The quickest way to do this, in my opinion, is using the keyboard shortcuts. Using the keyboard shortcuts J for next article and K for previous article, you can begin flipping through the articles very quickly without using your mouse. If you see an article that you'd like to read later, simply press the S button and that adds a star to it. Any article that has a star attached to it will show up in your starred items folder, which you can use to view these later. You can begin to see as you continue flipping through these items that Google Reader is subtracting the total number of unread items from your account. So you can keep track of how many articles are in your inbox, so to speak. Simply continue to flip through using the J button and pressing S on any articles that you'd like to read later. Once you finish perusing the last few articles, you're done with the filtering phase. This usually only takes a few minutes out of my day, even when, on days when I have over 60 feeds, because you're moving through it pretty quickly, and you're just starring the items that you'd like to read. Now, either right away, or tomorrow, or a week from now, I can go back and read those items that I thought were important. At any time, I can click the Start Items folder to see the articles that I picked out myself to read. This is my second pass. It's just like the first pass, except for this time I'm actually reading what's in my inbox. So now I can go ahead and look at all the data that's in here. Clicking links will take you to the page. You can click on the top link to actually take you to this particular article if you'd like to view that website. As you read through your start items, you use the same keyboard shortcuts, J and K, for going through your different articles. And when you're done with an article, simply press the S button again to remove the star from that article. And from now on, it will no longer be in your start items. This is what I do with the articles that I've finished with. If you see an article you especially like and would like to send to somebody else, you can use the email button, which integrates with your Gmail account, to send a quick email off to a friend or another person who you think may be interested in this article. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Once you start combining Google Reader with things like Grease Monkey and Firefox add-ons, it can truly become a robust reader that you can use on a daily basis. For step-by-step -step instructions for everything seen in today's video, as well as tips, tricks, and additional links not found in today's video, head over to techbytes.com. That's tech-bytes.com forward slash feeds for today's episode particularly. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and will consider signing up for our newsletter so I can let you know when the next one is out. Until then, I hope you'll enjoy Google Reader. We'll see you next week.